Lipid is a very important source of energy for human. In a typical Western diet, it supplies approximately 40% of energy. Among these 40% of energy, 95% of those is contributed by the fatty acids, and the remaining 5% is contributed by the glycerol. As a principal storage of energy, human bodies carries about 10 kilograms of fat. That's very important for our survival. Do you know how we can make use of those 10 kilograms of, of fat? Think about this scenario. If we happen to get lost in a jungle and live on a basal metabolic rate of 1,800 kilocalories per day, and that 10 kilogram of fat can keep us alive for up to 52 days without any food. However, harnessing those energy from the fat is a very complicated metabolic event. It involves a lot of biochemical reactions and also involves a lot of hormonal regulatory pathways. Now in this section, I will talk to Professor Chen to ask about the details of those metabolic reactions and how are those reactions are regulated by hormones. Welcome back to the program, Professor Chen. Now last time we talked about glucose metabolism and in yeah. this section, I'm going to change to another group of molecules we call lipids. Yes. As we know that uh, lipids metabolism also involve a lot of biochemical reactions and then those chemical reactions are also regulated by hormones. And before we talk about the regulation of hormones, could you tell us uh, more about the major events or the major contents when we talk about lipid metabolism? Yes, Patrick, thank you. Uh, lipid metabolism is a bit more complicated than mm -hmm. uh, sugar or glucose metabolism mm -hmm. because lipids do not dissolve in water. Right. Okay, so uh, you know, free fatty acids mm -hmm. join with glycerol to form triacylglycerol mm -hmm. or triglycerides in lipids or in lipogenesis. So the uh, stored lipids would be packed with other proteins mm -hmm. forming lipoproteins mm -hmm. in the liver mm -hmm. to be delivered in blood circulation mm -hmm. to other tissues. Mm -hmm. uh, more interesting is about lipid that are always stored in a special tissue known as adipose tissues. Adipose tissue, that means yeah. fat cell. Right? Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. in our body. So there are many steps involved in circulating mm -hmm. around our body mm -hmm with lipid metabolism, but mm. however, the basic principle are mm. pretty straightforward. Uh, Professor Chen, you mentioned about the hormones. Then what exactly are those hormones? Oh, okay. Um, similar to glucose metabolism, uh, insulin and glucagon mm. are also involved in controlling lipid metabolism. However, adipose tissues also play an important role by secreting many different hormones. Uh, by making its own interesting hormones. So in this video, we shall discuss these hormones. First, we will look at lipid metabolism and its response to feeding. Second, we will look at lipid metabolism response to fasting and exercise. We shall also discuss two tipping points for the control of lipid metabolism and also find out how hormones from the adipose sites control lipid metabolism. In conclusion and discussion, we shall discuss how obesity causes diseases and also learn how our brain may control food intake and lipid metabolism. Lipogenesis involves the making of triglycerides from fatty acids and glycerol. While lipolysis is about the breaking down of fats or triglycerides to produce energy from TCA cycle. Professor Chen, you told us that lipids could be synthesized. And how exactly are those lipids synthesized? And where are those precursors coming from? Our liver plays an important role in absorbing chylomicrons or fat droplets digesting them to obtain the raw materials for lipogenesis. Mm -hmm. The triglycerides made are packed in 
very low density lipoproteins or other lipoproteins secreted to the blood circulation and deposited to the adipose tissues. When we need energy, the lipids will be digested by lipase to form fatty acid for energy production in the muscle, for example. And now we know that uh, the, our diet provides a lot of lipids and also the, uh, precursors for the metabolism. So when a human body is in a well-fed state, how is those metabolic pathways controlled by hormones? Of course, when we are fed or after a big meal, a calorie-rich meal, mm -hmm. the crucose and amino acids will be entering the liver for more lipoprotein production. So our gut will digest triglyceride to fatty acids and acylglycerol by using pancreatic lipids for mucosal cellular uptake of these smaller molecules after digestion. These smaller molecules are further packed in chylomicron, digested by lipids in the liver as raw materials for the production of lipoproteins. Crucose could also be directly metabolized to fats in the adipose tissues. All these steps are promoted by insulin. Professor Chen, then in the last time, we learned about the glucose metabolism, and then now we learned about the lipid metabolism. I'm just curious to know that uh, if there are any correlations between these two types of metabolic pathways, and if yes, how are these two seemingly different pathways are regulated at the same time? Yes, they are all controlled by insulin in our body. So insulin can facilitate glucose uptake via GLU2, a glucose transporter in the liver. The glucose would either be stored as glycogen or converted to pyruvate by using an enzyme called PEPCK, phosphoanylpyruvate carboxylase. Insulin receptor could also promote this pathway and enhance lipogenesis in the mitochondria. Professor Chen, sufficient food is not always guaranteed. So in contrast to the welfare state, how does human body cope with the fasting period or how does it meet the demands of energy during like a strenuous exercise? And in these cases, would there be any hormones that also have a role in this? When fasting or when we do exercise, glucagon will act on adipose tissue to digest lipids by turning on a hormone-sensitive lipase. Glucagon also enhances beta oxidation of free fatty acids in the liver for more energy production with acetyl-CoA. Glucagon insulin ratio is crucial in controlling these steps. Insulin is able to inhibit the hormone-sensitive lipase in the fat cells. Let's go back to the adipose tissue again. Now, as we know that uh, fats are stored in the adipose tissue, but they are metabolized in liver or in other tissues. So how are those fats mobilized out of the adipose tissue? And would there be any other proteins or hormones uh, help the process? There are at least two tipping points in controlling lipid metabolism. Mm -hmm. First is to remove a protein called paralipin. Paralipin is a protein covers fat droplets inside the cells. Activation of lipid catabolism is controlled by psychic AMP stimulated protein kinase A and further phosphorylation of paralipin and lipase. After the stimulation by psychic AMP, paralipin is removed from the lipid droplets. The hormone sensitive lipase is also activated to get onto the droplet to digest the fats. Low insulin glucagon ratio promotes fatty acid oxidation and lipolysis by activating the lipase and removing paralipin. In other words, high glucagon promotes lipolysis and insulin can stop this hormone-sensitive lipase. Here's the structure of psychic AMP. Phosphodiesterase can convert psychic AMP to normal AMP 
Insulin can activate phosphodiesterase to stop lipolysis. Uh, we know that uh, fatty acids could be broadly classified according to the number of carbon atoms. And the medium chain fatty acids are essentially metabolized in the mitochondria. So uh, I wish to know if there is any other organelles that could also metabolize fatty acids. Yes, and this organelle is peroxisome. And the second tipping point is to act on a receptor known as PPAR. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor. This receptor works with RxR retinoid X receptor to turn on genes for peroxisomal beta oxidation. For example, a gene called acyl-CoA oxidase, it makes an enzyme called ACO or acyl-CoA oxidase, which is the rate limiting enzyme of the pathway of beta oxidation. In other words, fatty acid breakdown of beta oxidation is controlled by PPAR and RxR. Long chain fatty acid of the size of longer than 20 carbons are degraded by beta oxidation in the peroxisomes. As these steps produces hydrogen peroxide which needs to be controlled inside the peroxisome. Beta oxidation also produces other useful materials like bile acid and plasmalogen. Now the hormones so far you mentioned are produced by the pancreas or the adrenal gland. Are there any other hormones that are produced by the adipocytes themselves? And what are their functions? Yes, in addition to insulin and glucagon from the pancreas, recently two hormones from adipose tissues, namely leptin and adiponectin, are also confirmed to be crucial in controlling lipid metabolism in our body. Leptin acts to the brain to inhibit food intake and increase energy expenditure as more and more hormones are found in the adipose tissues. Adipose tissues is regarded as an endocrine organ. Crucose also plays a significant role in making of obesity. GLU4 from the adipocytes can pack up glucose for lipogenesis. Of course, if we do exercise or need energy, we can burn the lipid out by lipase. But in a stable lifestyle in a city with all the convenience we have, leading to obese body shape, which is causing this regulated adipokine secretion, causing systemic insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Obesity does cause diseases. So we learn about different aspects of lipid metabolism. How could we put those small pieces of knowledge together into a bigger picture? To sum up, insulin and glucagon from the pancreas again play crucial roles in lipid metabolism. Insulin promotes glucose uptake and also the use of chylomicron in the liver for lipoprotein synthesis. Insulin can stop the hormone-sensitive lipase and glucagon stimulates phosphorylation of paralipin and hormone-sensitive lipase to digest lipids for lipolysis and oxidation of fatty acids. Another tipping point is at the PPAR, peroxisome proliferator activator receptor, to activate fatty acid oxidation in peroxisome. The adipose tissue is also identified as an organ secreting many hormonal factors. Leptin is one of those recently identified hormones communicating with the brain and adiponectin, resistin, etc. If you are interested in this topic, please find out more recent research in this regard, especially on how the brain controls lipid metabolism and food intake and at the end could affect the formation of diabetes. In obese patients or adults with intermediate obesity, dysregulation of adipocrine secretion could also cause systemic insulin resistance, leading to type 2 diabetes.
Professor Chen, we have discussed about the metabolic concepts and their hormonal controls. Thank you so much for coming. You're most welcome. Carbohydrates and lipids are organic molecules that provide energy for human body. In this section, we talk about the metabolism of lipids and its hormonal regulation in different scenarios, such as well-fed states and fasting states. In the next episodes, I will talk about a small inorganic molecule called calcium. Professor Chen will tell us about the metabolism of calcium and its regulation. Until then, see you next time.